Today we're going to talk about the one thing in Elixir syntax that I've seen trip up more beginners than anything else. Hey, what's up? It's marketalchemist.camp where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today it's just going to be a quick tip on map syntax. As you can see, maps are delimited by a percent sign and a pair of braces. And the keys are separated from the values with a hash rocket or an equal greater than. The keys can be atoms, they can also be strings, both are fine. This is the default map syntax. It's a little confusing because like Ruby, Elixir has two ways of doing it. So if you're coming from a different language, uh, you may just see the dot syntax. So let's just look at one at a time. Now the way we access the map is uh, pretty simple. We can just do example and then put the key inside brace inside brackets instead of braces. So atom like so, and we can do string like so, and in both cases we just get the value back. Now what's a little bit confusing is if we had a map where all the keys are atoms, then you can see uh, we get this other display in IEX. Instead of the hash rocket syntax, what we see happen is the colon moves from the left side of the atom to the right side, and then after a space, we see the value immediately. So there's no hash rocket. It's a little bit more terse. It's pretty easy to read and it's clear, which is nice, but keep in mind, this is just a shortcut. This is just syntactic sugar. So it means the exact same thing. And that's why when I type it in, in the default way, we get the shorthand back as long as all the keys are atoms. Now to access this map, we can do the same thing we would uh, for the first map. Uh, I guess we have a lot of examples here. So example two can just say uh, another atom. And there we go, because it's, it's the same thing. However, there is a special syntax for accessing atoms. So you can just use a dot instead of putting the atom in between brackets. Once again, it's a little bit shorter and uh, just a lot of programmers are used to dots. It's just a, uh, a nice syntax to have. And we can do that with uh, our first example as well for the atom. We can't do it with a string. There's no way to use a dot syntax like this. That just doesn't make any sense for the string. It's got to be between braces or between brackets, I should say. Now, it's not just atoms or strings that can be the keys of a map. You can actually have just about anything as the keys of the map. Uh, we'll give a quick example with numbers. So we'll say uh, one, uh, one squared is, is one, two squared is uh, four, and three squared is nine. And now we can access those elements once again by just putting the key inside a pair of brackets like so. And we can't use a dot syntax because they're not atoms. So just to refresh really quickly, we can use this hash rocket syntax anytime we're defining a map. And we can use this bracket syntax anytime we want to access an element. If the key is an atom, then we can get the atom by using dot. So example dot atom. And when we're defining the map, if the key is an atom, we can just put the colon on the other side of it. So foo is four. And finally, maps are a lot more flexible than people realize. You can have just about anything as keys. So we could have true be the key for say uh, the atom horse. We could have uh, the list one, two, three be the key for our examples, our example map that we defined already. And you could even have that example map be the key that evaluates to false. And here you see, we have a very unconventional map and none of these are atoms. Well, except true technically is an atom. You should actually check out my video on Elixir Booleans. The way that works is kind of neat. But to access these, uh, well, since I did say true is technically an atom, we can do that and get it. Uh, we can also just do one, two, three, like so. Uh, actually, got a, it's a list. So one of, the, one of the brackets is for the list syntax. The other pair of brackets is 
um, the access of the map. And there you go.